night. Who's ready to rock out today? Last night, uh, Godsmack Vibes Tour. You know, I had a little bit of mixed feelings around attending, thinking, okay, it's like a different version. What's it going to be like? You know, is it going to be the hard-hitting show that I'm used to? And, of course, it's not, you know? So, went to Fantasy Springs in Indio with one of my buddies at work, Angelo. And, man, it was surreal. It really was cool. You know, they, they kicked things off with kind of a rendition of Pink Floyd, Time. You know, and it was, it was clear right away when that came out that this wasn't just another concert. Uh, this, this was like a, a Godsmack rendition of just chill. You know, it wasn't so hard hitting as most of their shows are with a fire and just pounding song after pounding song with a few melodies and uh, ballads thrown in there. The clarity of the sound in this place was amazing. You know, their, their sound guys did a fantastic job. You know, we saw Fantasy Springs Casino in Indio out in the California desert. Great place to see a show. Right when everything's going down in Coachella, you know, we've got this great show happening in Indio and it was awesome. I think they found the sweet spot of their sound stage and it was just awesome. Anyway, it was nice to be uh, a guest of the tribe. That was cool. We got free candy and water and stuff. That was neat. Here's a here's an old relic of mine. This is a backstage pass that Sully signed for me back in 2009 Went with my son Julian. That was a lot of fun. Let's talk about the set list. The set list was awesome. Time, of course, from Pink Floyd. Love, Hate, Sex, Pain. Voodoo. Turning to Stone. Spiral. One Rainy Day. And then my favorite, No Quarter from Led Zeppelin. Man, Tony shined on that. That was just awesome. Uh, nothing Else Matters. You know, a little acoustic starting, you know, Metallica cover. Serenity. Touche. Truth. Growing Old. Lighting Up the Sky. And then, you know, Sully sits down to, at the piano and does Under Your Scars, which was amazing. Bulletproof. And then at the end, it was like a party. You know, come together. You know, Beatles cover with a little Stairway to Heaven vibe kind of thrown in there. And uh, it was awesome. You know, one of my favorite parts was, you know, on the background, they're playing all these great visuals. And then, you know, they were also showing some little history of the band from the last 25 years. You know, showing nostalgic videos. Uh, my friend Dean Carr did a couple of videos for them back in the day. Voodoo and Straight Outta Line, which are just like amazing videos. Dean, you're awesome. Um, and I saw those kind of moments and some of those scenes kind of play out. It really just kind of gave you that feeling of like, man, these guys have been around for 25 years. Great musicians. You know, great people. You know, they, they have a nice cause. Uh, and a charity that they do, which I support totally. Um, so anyway, I mean, you know, it, it's not a pounding night of, of Godsmack, but it was just surreal. It, it felt like, you know, if you had Sully and his bandmates, you know, come and play in your backyard and do something that they wanted to do their way, they did it, you know, and they can do that. They've been around for long enough. They don't have to you know, play to the masses. They can be true to themselves and do something fun and a little risky. And they did, and they pulled it off, and it was fucking awesome. So, if you get a chance to go see it, go see it. All right, on with the show.
Thank you very much. Indio, California. My God, good evening, everybody. Look at you. Oh, you. You all showed up today. Well, nice to see you guys again. It has been a long, long fucking time since we got to this neck of the woods. So thank you guys for inviting us into your part of the country. We appreciate that. Tonight, we wanted to bring you guys a little bit different of a show than you are normally used to seeing when Godsmack comes through somewhere in California on the bigger stages. Tonight, we thought it would be a cooler and much better idea to bring this smaller, intimate, have you guys experience music in a different way because I think, if I'm not wrong, that's why we're all here tonight, for the gift of music what it's done for us over the years. And I hope that before the night is over, maybe, maybe just maybe, you guys will leave here tonight and see and feel and hear music a little bit differently than you ever have before. So Indio, welcome to the journey.
music does this to people, right? And I really think, let's have a talk for a second. We're going to have a talk. We're going to not play music for a second here. It's time we have a little chat. We haven't seen you guys in a long time, so let's have a little one-on-one -on -one conversation, okay? Is that okay? I really think as the more we move through this kind of show and do this tour, I've really started to see how special music is to so many people besides us, because honestly, we, um, us as musicians, you know, we've had music in our life, our entire life. I've been playing music since I was three and a half years old. My dad's a musician. My great uncle was actually a famous composer in Sicily. So music's just been in my bloodline. But there's so many people here tonight and so many people that we see on a daily basis, uh, show after show. And we, we see how important music is to all of you guys and how you respect it and love it as much as we do. Even though we create it, you guys are the appreciators, and music is really something that has become the soundtrack to all of our lives, if you think about it, right? It's been there our whole life. It brings us so many great memories, and uh, I think that's the beauty of music, you know, and that's why we're here tonight, to celebrate this awesome gift that we all share as a universal language. And... Uh, like I said, I really hope that uh, when you guys leave here tonight, maybe you'll hear some of your favorite songs a little bit differently than you ever have before because I'll tell you a quick story. I was on tour a while ago and I was sharing a bottle of wine with a friend of mine on my tour bus and we were having a conversation. I was working on a book and uh, this whole concept and subject came up about music. And as we we're talking about music and how powerful it is, 
Uh, this song came on the radio. Some of you may know it, some of you may not. But there's a song by the Mamas and the Papas called California Dreaming. <laughs> How appropriate, sitting here in California. And I remember just kind of zoning out to the song, man. And even though I had no connection to it lyrically, I remember like it was just, it made me feel like heavy and sad and beautiful and like all these different emotions were coming out of me because of these beautiful melodies that they were singing. And I was like, wow, this is really powerful. Like I wonder why that is. Why does music affect us like that emotionally? Because if you think about it, music is really nothing more than a bunch of notes, right? Notes are just sound waves, that's it. So if you keep going down that rabbit hole, and stick with me here for a second, because you're about to enter the mind of motherfucking Sally Erna right here. <laughs> this is the shit I think. This is the shit I do and think about when I'm on a fucking tour bus drinking tequila and shit like that. You know? <laughs> but seriously, think about this. So music is nothing more than a bunch of sound waves, right? But sound is nothing more than frequencies. And if you keep breaking it down, a frequency is nothing more than a simple vibration. So if I have a string and I pull it really tight, it's gonna make a higher sound, right? If I loosen it a little bit, it's a little thicker, it's gonna make a lower sound. But they're just vibrations, whether it's a drum head, a piano string, your vocal cords, a guitar, they're just vibrations. So my question really is, to God or the universe, whoever it is that created this, why, if music is nothing more than simple vibrations, why does it affect us emotionally? Right? Why does when these vibrations come in contact with the human body, it creates emotion? And that's the fucking miracle of music to me. That's the true anomaly of this gift, right? Because I could play you like a simple, this is called the major E chord. Sounds kind of normal, right? Right? Normal, but kind of happy. But if I just change the position of my fingers and I change these vibrations. It's kind of sad sounding, right? Hey, that's what I'm saying though. Who made those rules? Why is this the sad chord? Like why couldn't this have been the happy chord? There's no lyrics or anything connecting this, but this for some reason, they're just things vibrating, but for some reason we hear this, we feel it, and it's sad. Like this should have been like a bummer. I can't even do the bummer face right now. <laughs> but you get my point, right? Because we could go, I mean, I've asked people this before, why does music affect you emotionally? And a lot of people do say, well, it's the lyrical content, right? It's one of those things that those lyrics really translated in my life and reminded me of a situation I went through. And I go, okay, fair enough. But why is it that you can go see a violin player play all by yourself and it can literally fucking bring you to tears, right? That's the beauty of music. And this is the one thing that I would love to ask God, although I know he's not here tonight, man, and none of us are qualified to answer this because maybe God could, but he's not here tonight because I would have definitely put him on the guest list because I have to have a word with that, that fucking guy. Boy, he put me through a couple of good years lately. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's one of those things that I go, well, this is really, it's, it just blows my mind. There's only a couple things that blow my fucking mind, by the way. One of them, most of the time, it's just shit that I can't wrap my head around, but one of them is like space, you know, like aliens in space and shit like that. And not that the aliens freak me out. I want to meet one of those little son of a bitches. I have, I would love to hang out with them. They're, they're fucking smart, those, those things. It's space, right? So check, the, <laughs> I told you, you're gonna go down a fucking rabbit hole with me, shut up. <laughs> space is fucked up, right? Because when you think about it, they say that if you could build a ship that could shoot off this planet in any direction and just go straight forever. No lefts, no rights, no any, go up, down, this way, I don't care which way you wanna pick. Shoot off the planet straight, forever. Really? We never hit a fucking wall out there. Nothing, it just doesn't end forever. Do you know how long fucking forever is? It's a long fucking time is my point. You know, that in numbers, numbers fucks me up. Numbers freak me the fuck out. 
because I want to know what the biggest number is right now. And they're like, well, there is no biggest number. You can just add one to it. I'm like, fuck you. I want to know what the biggest fucking number is. That doesn't even make sense. So music to me is another one of those things that as I started thinking about this theory of why these are just simple vibrations, but they connect with us emotionally, is the biggest mind blower for me, man. And I want you guys to appreciate this because the next time you hear your favorite song, you're gonna remember that these things are nothing but vibrations, right? But if I pluck them out of sequence, for instance, and I just randomly hit these frequencies like this, they make no sense to you, right? But if I just start straightening out the vibrations and I just change the pattern a little bit, starts making sense, right? Becomes familiar to you. Maybe takes you back to a time and place when you first heard that song.
just vibrations.
Thank you very much. How are we doing so far out there? Are we good still? Are you sure? Is everybody here still in a good fucking mood? That's all I care about. Really. Okay, good. As long as we're in a good mood, then we're fine. Because I am about to bum you right the fuck out with this next song. <laughs> they ask us all the time, they're like, hey, you know, on this tour, are you guys going to talk about these songs? Are you going to tell us about them and like what they meant to you when you wrote them and where they came from and what the stories were? And I'm like, no, actually. Why the fuck would I go down that rabbit hole of pain and misery again? <laughs> if anyone knows anything about me, then you guys know that I've always wrote about something that's affected me emotionally on a personal level, whether it was good or bad. There were never really stories that I made up. There was events that happened in my life that just be kind of came journal entries, and those journal entries grew up to be songs. But I will tell you real quickly about this one, because this one just sucks, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, uh, it came from a pretty dark fucking place not too long ago. We were, we were actually working on our last record called Lighting Up the Sky, which I hope a bunch of you people have. Yes, yes, good. Because we're going to play you guys a few songs. Um, and uh, as we were working on this record back in Florida, uh, I think it was in 21, something like that, uh, we were about, I don't know, two or three months deep into the, into writing, you know, where we were just kind of like trying out riffs and seeing what was working and what wasn't working. And about, I don't know, three months into that process, um, the person that I was with for about seven years decided to do a very selfish and stupid, careless thing and betray the relationship. And, uh, it just kind of, you know, this one, I won't lie, it, it banged me up pretty good. And, um, so I told the guys, I, you know, I pulled them aside at one point. I said, you know, I need to, I need to go away from here for a little while and I need to kind of get my head and my heart straight because it's a little fucked up right now. Um, and of course, the brothers that these guys have been for me over the last 30 fucking years have been so solid for me and they supported me all the way. Um, and so I left. I left and, uh, you know, I kind of went and healed and spent a lot of time by myself and got through that whole mess. And I came back about, I don't know, six or eight months later and I, I had had this song that I had written over that time period, and uh, but it was, you know, it was kind of a, a more of a, like a piano ba power ballad, power rock ballad. And uh, but I told the guys, I'm like, I have this song, I want to play you, and I want to just see what you think of it. And um, so I played them the song, and they were like, Wow, you know, it's it's really strong. We, you know, we should put it on the record. And I'm like, Yeah, but is that what we're doing? Because you know, Godsmack usually comes out we're a heavy hitting fucking band. Um, and then, uh, you know, a couple of them said, why not? I think it was Shannon, actually. They're like, you know, he goes, you know, we, you did it on the last record on When Legends Rise when you wrote Under Your Scars and it went and got a hundred million views. So, why not? And I'm like, okay, so we recorded the song, which was really kind of tough to get through because it was still raw and very vulnerable and emotional for me. Um, but, you know, it made it onto the record. It is now our new single that's on the radio. It's a song called Truth. So we will play you this miserable son of a bitch right now. <laughs> but I will tell you, on a, on a positive note, uh, you know, just to kind of end the story with a little bit of humor, um, when I came back after all this time, and, uh, you know, after I settled in and they could see I was doing a little bit better, Shannon approached me one day and he goes, hey, I gotta, I gotta let you in on a little secret. You know, we knew when you were away you were going through a hard time, but we knew you were gonna come back with a really good fucking song. <laughs> You motherfucker, you guys, I'm sitting there on a broken fucking heart, and you guys are betting on me like I'm some side Vegas bet. Fuck. So, yeah. So anyways, there you go. Enjoy my misery.
assumed control. We have assumed control. We have assumed control. You knew we were coming back. I just actually had to just get a drink of water real quick. <laughs> I wasn't going to keep you hanging too long. Hey, I just want to say before we continue and play you guys at least two more songs. Um, I just want to say on behalf of myself and the members of my band in Godsmack, thank you guys for 25 years of loyalty and support. It's been a very surreal and emotional year for us knowing that <clears throat> we've been out here this long for a quarter of a century doing this stuff. And I gotta tell you, it's, it's something that I don't think any of us would have chose anything else in our lives to do, but it's because of people like you that allowed us to do this for a living and kept us out here for this long. So thank you guys for supporting us. And thank you for supporting live music continuously showing up to see live shows that is really the most important part because I, I will promise you one thing I don't care how fucking good technology gets in this world you will never and I mean never be able to replicate the energy of a live show to a computer screen you know what I mean So good for you guys for being a part of this. Um, and this song right here that we're going to do for you, it's a song that's become very <clears throat> important to us uh, in this band, but it's also a song that kind of, once it was released, it kind of grew up to become a lot bigger than the band itself, and it had a bigger purpose, and we didn't know that at the beginning. Because when I wrote this song, I wrote it about a situation, once again, that I had went through, and uh, realizing that we all have these imperfections in our lives, right? We all have these things that we're a little bit embarrassed about, or a little bit vulnerable with, and we don't want to really expose some of these traumas, whether they're physical, whether they're emotional, and we call these traumas scars. And this song really helped us develop our first and only non-profit organization called the Scars Foundation, which is right here in front of the piano for you. And for those of you who don't know what that's about, I will tell you. The Scars Foundation is the first and only non-profit organization in the world that deals with multiple categories and all things mental illness. So we try to target, after losing some seriously close friends and family in our lives to suicide and addiction and things like that. Um, we wanted to target all things that funnel people into a depressive state of mind. So the Scars Foundation deals with suicide prevention, severe depression, addiction, bullying, PTSD. 
Um, and I will tell you, we've built this amazing community, right? Right here at this website. So if you want to take a picture of the QR code, take a picture of the website, whatever, take it home with you later, maybe some other day when you're thinking about it, or if yourself, or if you know somebody who needs some support, send them here, okay? Because we have built an incredible team, doctors, therapists, and we are making an incredible change around the world, saving lives, and it has been the most rewarding fucking work I've ever done. So in honor of that, and some of the friends that we lost along the way, this is my gift to you. It's a song called Under Your Scars.
So I just want to take one more minute here to not only remember some of the people we lost in our lives, but I think we should take a minute to remember all the greatest artists that graced us with their presence once, left us with some of the most amazing music we've ever heard in our lives. Music that became the soundtrack to our lives. Remember that? People like Chris Cornell. Chester Bennington. Amy Winehouse, Dime Mag Darrell, Eddie Van Halen. I mean, guys, listen, I could do this for an hour. The point is, it's too many. So, we're going to give them something back tonight. For everything they did for us, left us with, we're going to send them some energy back up there with our voices to not only say thank you for everything they gave us but to remind them that we're all still down here waving the rock and roll fucking flag to them, you know? So, we sing like this
guess we're not leaving. No? I thought we were going after that song. Robbie says no. One more, at least one more, one more, one more. Yeah, why not? It's Friday night and I feel alright. Party's here on the west side. <laughs> Alright, let's do one for fun then. If we're gonna end the night with one more, I wanna do something fucking fun. Something these people know. Um, before we go, before we continue, I do wanna take one second here for you guys to meet a couple of very important people in our lives. Two gentlemen that I've known for a very long time. Some of the nicest and kindest hearted people I've ever known in my life and some of the truest talented musicians, incredible musicians I've ever played with in my life. Please say hello to Mr. Chris Decato on the keyboards helping us out tonight. Chris, you want to give him a little ditty? You got something for him? Oh, just freestyling that shit. Encyclopedia of classic rock fucking guitar, Mr. Tim Terrio on guitars and vocals. <laughs> this fucking dude, this dude, I swear to God, this is what we do backstage. We play Let's Try and Stump Timmy game because the motherfucker knows every classic rock song pretty much in the book. I'm not even kidding. Look at this. She's even flipping you off right here. Tim. Right here. This girl, she's like, I'm just gonna... I swear to God, this is the truth. You want to you wanna see? I, I, I'll just rattle shit off the top of my head and we'll see where he's at. Spirit of the Radio by Rush. Woo! All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, Hair of the Dog by Nazareth. You got one? You wanna say? You wanna try it? You think I'm staging this shit? Just give me a song. What? In a God of Davida, he said. In a God of Everything. Not only does he know the fucking song, he knows the solos and everything. What? What is that? Huh? UFO? Yeah. Michael, rock bottom? You know rock bottom? It's kind of metal, man. Oh, that's metal, right. I said classic rock. Okay, that's, uh, I don't know, you're cheating. You got one? Carry on my wayward son by Kansas. You see what I mean? This goes on for fucking hours sometimes. Can't get him. Give him one. You didn't get one, Tony? No? Son of a bitch. All right, stop it. And also say hello to my brother in arms, Mr. Robbie Merrill, tonight. Something away on the bass, Mr. Tony Rambola, lead guitar. And the baddest motherfucking drummer on this goddamn planet, Mr. Shannon James Lockett.
बच्चों का ही जस्ट यू आर ए प्ले
Till next time.